Welcome to the podcast for the Wildlife Trust of South and West Wales and today I'm in Taufachan Nature Reserve, about 2.9 kilometres uh, north of Merthyr Tydfil. This is a real hidden gem of a reserve that uh, is quite a magical place to come and visit actually. Uh, not many people know about it, um, apart from the local boys who I think come swimming in the river that you can hear gurgling away beneath me. Um, and I'm stood on a bridge looking down the res- um, reserve towards the A465. You might occasionally hear a bit of a rumble of traffic going past, um, but it's sort of a beautiful isolated reserve and as soon as you walk up the valley a little bit the traffic just disappears into the background and is gone. Um, you walk down from Koi to Kuma, uh, village and you'll see uh, some steps uh, heading down into the reserve and if you follow those down you'll, you'll come out onto this lovely bridge uh, and then into the most spectacular of reserves. So I'm off to go and find uh, a couple of people we're going to walk around the reserve with today. So I'm with Karis, who is the Wildlife Trust Officer for the Nature Reserve Tafakan. And I'm with Graham as well, who volunteers on the Nature Reserve. And if anybody follows the Facebook page, we'll see Graham's regular updates um, about the reserve and the work that they're doing. So, Karis, tell me a little bit about what we're standing in here now, the, the grassland that we're standing in. Um, OK, so this is a nice flat area on the reserve, one of the few flat open areas. And it's um, been created by the quarry workings that went on here many years ago to supply the uh, Kavartha furnaces, which are just downstream. So we've got this lovely sort of undulating, open, calcareous meadow. Um, so it's, you know, you've got lots of hills and humps with uh, antills all over the place, really mature antills. Some of them are absolutely huge. And, um, yeah, lots of scrubland as well. I think over the years, the woodland sort of coming down off the valley sides and uh, growing over the uh, meadow, which is one of the things we're trying to trying to manage at the moment because last um, time i was here there was horses here as well so we're using them as grazing animals yeah yeah, they're not on yet they're gonna they're gonna be put on sort of in mid-july and they come from the farm just up on the top of the cliff there yeah uh yeah and this is one of the most spectacular parts of the reserve i think and you know you you come out of the really steep enclosed Mm. valley and it opens up and usually people who haven't been here before their first reaction is wow you know when they come out from under the under the bridge there, underneath the E465, and then this opens up and you're in the nature reserve, so it's a really, yeah, it's a spectacular spot, I think. Interesting, isn't it? We're so close to kind of a semi-urban environment, and yet it's actually, it's a totally different place, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's very it's very secluded. I mean, up, up on top of the valley, that side, you've got you've got lots of housing. Up on the other side, you've got an estate. And, you know, on all sides, it's, it's really enclosed by housing, but it's such a, yeah, it's such a secluded feel to it. Mm. It's um, a bit of wild. Yeah, yeah totally. Now, Graham, I'm going to ask you a little bit about limestone cliffs because you're oh, okay. <laughs> you're our expert geologist, I understand. <laughs> so, I mean, what makes this site so interesting? Because it's you've got these spectacular cliffs, haven't you? And then the meadow is calcareous grassland. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the geology of the site? Well, it, it's it's carboniferous limestone, so it's, it's about three hundred odd million years old. Pretty old. And it's uh, it's uh, deposited in a sort of tropical lagoons really where right. you get limestone from so there's going to be some nice fossils in the links this lot as well yes I suspect. There's, there's quite a few actually mm. yeah there's um plenty of shells and corals and mm. uh, crinoids and lots of lovely bits and pieces so this would have once been sort of at sea level or below sea, below level. sea level yes okay so think of barbados barbados Big. and Merthyr. yes <laughs> yeah it was fantastic so, I mean, the river's, I presume, what has carved the gorge largely, or is it actually a geological sort of fracture? Uh, the gorge is when we, when we go further up, that's all river cut. Yeah. Um, there might be a little bit of ice in there as well, but yeah, um, it's probably so. mostly river. The calcareous grassland then obviously has an impact on what grows here, doesn't it? So the, the meadow flowers that grow here. So what sort of things are we starting to see? in this sort um, of area then what comes up a lot here is um well like it seems to vary year by year mm. but like uh napweed seems to mm. cover the place um but there's not an awful lot coming up yet just a few uh a few daisies showing their heads here and there yes but um yeah i mean I, I, one of my volunteers said she's she used to walk up up and down here quite a lot she said that she used to see lots of orchids here on this bit of grassland mm. which she hasn't seen much of in recent years Okay. And um, so that's one of the things we're trying to do is sort of 
alter the grazing a bit and make the grassland a bit more accessible for grazing as well. And yeah. Yeah, but um, we're waiting for it to come into bloom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say this year, 2013, it seems to have uh, had a totally different weather pattern mm. again, isn't it, to the previous yeah. years? We seem to be so late in the, in the season that uh, everything's two or three weeks late, I suspect. Mm. Um, mm. But although there's some very nice cowslips out, Yes, a lot yes. of sort of the earlier spring flowers mm. that you'd expect to see. So, well, that's from what we've seen coming down, sort of wood avens and, and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. there's a little bit nice. of, of hop trefoil and, and bit, bits uh, wild strawberries. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. out, yeah. Uh, lovely. <laughs> and, uh, Dandelions, obviously, of course. <laughs> yes. Well, very important to yeah. certain bees and things like that. Mm. It's such a good early plant, isn't it? It's. Uh, we get we get lots of like um, tormental and. Um, uh, Meadowsweet, Meadow well. sweet oh, nice and self heal, and all yeah, all sorts. Classic yeah. meadow flowers, yeah. then nice. Yeah. A really multicolored mix down here. Yeah. You've got to spend sort of hours just looking down, basically. Yes. Yeah. If you look at your feet, there's what four, five, six different species just here. Mm. Yeah, there's sort of little rushes and all sorts of little sedge and grass and all sorts of things that yeah. I don't know the difference between, but no, marsh buttercups and few more butterflies around then. <laughs> oh nice. yes, that would be nice to see a few more butterflies, wouldn't it? And have we got anything interesting nesting in these cliffs? Uh, I think, well, you do get... Mm. Yeah, yeah mostly corvids, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see, you do see lots of ravens flying around in this area and... Uh, uh, what are they called? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well identified from that call. <laughs> I, oh I struggle. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you often see them circling and, and sort of vying for space down here. And no. we did see a, a, sm a sh was it a short-eared owl we saw. Well, I, was, I think it was. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. It um, sort of it wasn't it wasn't a buzzard. But it was too big yeah, for a yeah. uh, brown owl so. so we're floating slowly down that way is uh, that in the daytime yeah, yeah. yeah. being mm -hmm. chased being chased by jackdaws right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes the corvids will chase off anything that they think is a threat amusingly um that would be interesting on these cliffs as well there's there's lots of sort of hidden cave entrances mm. and things um because of the nature of the the rock i guess and mm. you know it's, it's great habitat for roosting bats mm. and there's quite a large cave just down the stream which has got a really nice assemblage of bats in it. Um, yeah. Horseshoe, you know, I think there were sort of 20 lesser horseshoes spotted coming okay, out so of it. Okay, so pretty rare bats, not yeah, just your common yeah. garden pipistrels or anything and like that. And a really good variety as well, so this up this way is, mm. is really nice foraging habitat for them. Yes. And Lots of midges as well. Yeah. Well, hence <laughs> nice yes. foraging habitat for... Yeah. And presumably you get swallows as well nesting in the cliffs. I haven't seen any, no. but you, you do see them about overhead, mm. so... Um, it would be a good place yeah. for them, you would think, they're wouldn't it? They're definitely nesting in the farm just on top there. Yeah. I've not seen them going in and out of the cliffs. No. no. <laughs> possibly too many jackdaws. Oh, yeah. possibly. <laughs> <laughs> There's another big quarry just off, off site, which is um, Vayner Quarry. Of course, yes. So There's yeah. another a large... Uh, cliff habitats there yeah. as well that's a fantastic one there's peregrine nesting up there so you see them going over sometimes okay. yeah. um yeah that's I what i wondered whether to. you know there'd be anything in this cliff face like yeah. peregrine but uh, maybe there's a bit too much activity there yeah. because that because that quarry is closed to public access yeah. whereas okay. this one does see quite a bit of action I should we I take an amble up yeah. yeah see if we can get out the wind a little bit so we've just walked up to a, a little sort of hilly promontory and uh well someone's been camping here some boys that Karis had seen last night and uh had a quick chat too and uh they you know we're pretty tolerant i think considering um we uh asked them to remove their rubbish but sadly well they did put it in the fire pit which i suppose is kind of tidying up but Karis, you were just saying that they kind of quite often put their glass in the, the actual fire itself. Yeah, I think I think they, in their minds, maybe that's disposing of it. They, th they throw their cans and their bottles in to burn. But then, of course, the glass breaks. And we've got the problem that there's little shards of glass there in the grassland. Um, yeah. the horses here as well. So it's mm. not good for the horses if there's little bits of glass in, in, the, in the grass for yeah. them to eat. Or yeah. dogs as well, I guess. Yeah. Or children. Or yeah, exactly. anybody, really. 
Yes, a bit more education work. Well, as I say, they put it in one place, which is better than scattering it around the campsite. Yeah. I think what, one of the other problems is that they tend to always make a new fire pit instead mm. of using the old ones. So they've made a lovely little pit here, like yes. it was stoned. But if they came back, we'd hope they'd use the same one. But I guess lots of different people come and mm. want to have their own little camp, choose their yeah. favourite spot. So yes, I can't really blame them because you can oh, understand no, why yeah. they'd want to come here. Um, just kind of would be a, better if they didn't set fire to the trees. Yeah, that's that's you see that all over the place. They, mm. they kind of think, well, we don't have to carry firewood then because we'll just build the fire at the base of the tree and the whole tree becomes the thing. fire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah you, see, you see that a lot. Yeah. yeah. No, that is a shame. Mm. But yeah, what a lovely place to camp. Yeah. That's why. See the track marks. Yes. I don't like to tell people, I didn't want to tell them get out because I want people to enjoy the place but I just wish people would tidy up after themselves oh, yeah. you know. well, Some of my best experiences of wildlife as a child was camping sort of in wild places, okay with my parents so yeah. slightly <laughs> more sedate but you know you, you get to experience quite a lot don't you so it's a shame to say no you can't have that Oh yeah I didn't uh, want to say that to them No, um, it's just it's about kind of getting people to understand why they need to take a bit of responsibility when they are here mm-hmm. and what, just some little things that they could do to, to make it even nicer for everybody coming back then yeah come and enjoy it but don't leave a mess please yeah <laughs> yeah definitely all right then let's head up the valley a little bit then So we've just come into a, uh, another little sort of clearing spot, really. Um, and Karis, this has changed quite a lot since the last time I was here, hasn't it? You've been doing a lot of work. Yeah, we, we spent a lot of time down here over the winter and autumn um, trying to take out, sort of selectively thinning the hawthorn that's down here because, you know, it's encroaching on the grassland and the, the horses that were grazing down here couldn't quite get in between mm. the trees. Um, so, yeah, we've opened it up a bit and there's quite a few stumps here, as you can see. Yes. And, um, yeah, it was really hard work. Oh, I mean, I, I couldn't have done it without my volunteers because um, there's just so, it's so much work dragging Hawthorne around and, and cutting and it up. And not the easiest pieces. or most compliant of woods to drag either, No, is it? it's really difficult. It can't, you can't really pack it down into small piles either. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we've opened it up and now the horses won't be wearing the tracks in between mm. the trees, which they were doing previously. And they can actually get in here and graze, graze a bit, bit more easily. And this should start seeing a lot more flowers coming. I mean, we can already see like plenty yeah. of violets and some cuckoo flower and mm. and some meadow sweet coming through and various other things. So mm. you can see how it benefits the grassland to have this sort of opening up. Oh yeah. It's well, lovely. you can see just over there. It's so shady. Um, yes. So we're going to keep some shady, scrubby areas because it's great nesting. It's nice contrast. As well. Yeah. Yeah, and then just trying to trying to claim back some of the grassland because mm. it's a woodland valley so it's good to try and try and look after these little bits of grassland that we've got yeah um, it's good to have the mix mm. always kind of creates the variety then doesn't it because you get more insects well, exactly. in more open areas yeah. and then you get sort of greater diversity of the birds and diversity. everything yeah coming in. Mm. lovely all right then let's carry on a bit further so we're looking up at a cliff now that's uh, got quite a a nice cave entrance into it that Karis has great ambitions to try and get to but it's about I don't know 100 foot up there are some ambitious climbers and cavers in the area who've said you know if you if you got up there and you'd have to dig you'd have to dig them out a bit they're yeah. probably quite silted up or whatever but um yeah this, the, the cave networks in this area are just amazing yeah, yeah. well I suppose if they're limestone then it's mm. just, just yeah. going to be water digging its way through all yeah, the time isn't it yeah. and sometimes you, you you be down here and sometimes you suddenly hear water coming out of the cliff for no apparent right. reason. A uh, heavy rain a couple of days before. Oh, and it and filters suddenly it comes out through the... Unexpected places. You suddenly hear <laughs> run, running water. Right. Mm. So at the base of the cliff you're saying there's some standing water that, well, is comes and goes, I suppose, yes. because of that yeah. sort of scenario, I guess. I think that's not a bad thing that it's sort of not permanent open water, mm. but in the reserve as a whole that at the bottom of the cliff there that is the only open water so that's yeah. great for you know for amphibians yeah. and dragonflies um, maybe. yeah yeah you do you do see them flitting mm. about down here but yeah we were thinking of maybe managing them a bit to try and keep them keep open them up a bit because it's really overgrown down there as well yeah We're but covered, yeah in covered in willows oh of course yeah. yeah. yes yeah. some some really beautiful very mature willows though mm. so we'd want to leave those Maybe get rid of some of the scrubby stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, but I suppose that's going to dry it up anyway, isn't it? Any, yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. But yeah, you occasionally see water pouring down this cliff, you know, it's mm. just very changeable. Yeah. Well, the, feels... they, they've vegetated so well, these cliffs. If you if you look at the pictures of when the quarry oh, quarrying yeah. operations were going on, this was just completely bare rock, you know, it wasn't wasn't that much of a habitat maybe but um yeah the trees growing out of it now were just amazing yeah so mm-hmm. a lot of these cliffs sorry graham yeah. we're, we're walking on the old, the old tram line oh yes so um this this bit we're on now is this flat this flat um, area this is the old tram line to take the take the um limestone down to carfer yeah so that came so you can, from you can follow that all the way down hmm. to down to the glass furnaces right basically. So this came from all the quarries that were along this route. Yeah. So this would have been really industrified, wouldn't it? It would oh, have yes. been yeah. a totally different place. Mm. Well, the whole area, you know, the mm. the, the Kavartha Ironworks downstream were one of the biggest in the world, one of the biggest iron producers, and it's because of this quarry that they, that they could do that, you know, the, for the flux, for mm. the um, for the furnaces. I mean, there's been a quarry up the road as well, but there's a sheltered ancient monument just downstream there, the Leet and Tram Road. So right. the water that fed the furnaces was taken from the river just over there. The limestone for the furnaces was taken from this quarry. Yeah. So, I mean, the, you know, it, it's a really intensely intense industry in the mm. area, and yet now it's this, uh, this lovely nature um, reserve. Pre-industrial revolution, is it? There's a pandy mill. Of course, yes. yes. There, yeah. a bit further which down. Which is agricultural, yeah. basically. Yeah. Mm. And so the pandy was... Mill. It was where you washed the fleeces, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Processed the fleece to make felt, basically. Right. Okay. Mm. And there's a, a corn mill at the top of the reserve. Mm. So there have been a lot of people yeah. in this spot, wouldn't there? There's always been people yeah. in this area. Yeah. You can see why. Uh, there's little industrial sort of bits and pieces when you walk all the way up, really. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. The odd uh, bits and pieces Signs. to learn about. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice to kind of have that history and heritage here as well. And nice to actually see how the wildlife and nature kind of takes it back as well. Oh yeah, yeah. It's all extra interest as well. It brings different sorts of people down mm. here. There's people who come down for the solitude or the wild- wildlife, mm. but there's lots of interesting geology and history down here as well. So, yeah, come and have a look. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, it's well worth a look, definitely, around here. Mm. And then this, the tram road, would that have gone all the way up to the reservoir? Did that go all the way up um, to the reservoir? No, I think it's it is pre- stops just up s- upstream. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm not quite sure how how far it goes up. No, well. The Taft Trail, which is just on top of the ridge there, that was that was the train line. So that went all the way up to to the reservoirs, and this this tram line here, which was horse drawn, mm. I suppose, that, that didn't go too far. You can see where it ended, just upstream. Right. Um, I don't even know why they took it that far, to be honest, because this is where the rock came from. Yeah, it's a mystery. Well, worth maybe looking there was into. something else yeah. going on. That, yeah. Mm. yeah. Depends which end of the quarry they started at, basically. Yeah, if they good. started that end and worked this way, they would have had to put the tramway all the way in. Yeah. But they are. Mm. Don't know. Mm. Who knows? I'd like to ex- yeah, look into that bit a bit more, because yeah. I uh, don't know much about that side of it. So we've walked up a little bit now, haven't we, from the, the meadows, and we're coming into a far more kind of closed-in area, where actually you've got some fantastic boulders, um, limestone boulders uh, sort of that are tumbled down the hillside, haven't we? And, it's beautiful so Very mossy and green and yeah this is where the the landscape really changes the valley sides close in so we're leaving the quarry workings mm. now and um from here on it's um a really sort of dramatic river gorge it, the, the river's very dominant um yeah. yeah so a real change of scene yeah. yeah and it's a really sort of humid and um noisy environment yeah. so it's perfect for kind of ferns and sort of the bryophytes that are yeah. This area is actually quite famous for, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Um, I mean, the, this area is uh, notified as the Triple SI for its woodland, um, but it's also noted for its um, assemblage of bryophytes. Uh, so, because of the, geolo- the special geology, mm. you get lots of specialist bryophytes that are specific to humid, wooded, limestone valleys. Um, okay. So, I think we've got something like um, tw- uh, 18 na- 18 locally notable species and then seven nationally notable species of bryophytes. So it's a real hot spot for limestone mm. bryophytes, yeah. Which, you know, not everybody takes much notice of, but when you kind of get down on your hands and knees and start having a look at them, they're absolutely mm. beautiful, aren't they? They're, yeah. they're stunning, yeah. stunning things. And it's sort of 
I know on my on the Facebook page one of the things that I always try and point people at is kind of not the big stuff but the really little stuff that everybody can walk past so easily and not oh, realise, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, there's a whole little landscape if you get up close to these rocks. It's like mm. a little forest in itself. Yeah, you know, just, just on one eye fall. Every boulder here has got its own sort of moss and yeah. ferns and things on it and they're all different. Each, each, one, each boulder's different. It's like so, a yeah. whole little world in its own, isn't yes. it? Beautiful, beautiful. So we've come into a, an amazing bit now, isn't it? It's sort of where the limestone has been really carved out by the river and you've got sort of lots of dips and kind of cre- crevices and um, sort of very overhung areas. In fact, it was very overhung there where the water's carved out underneath. And we've just seen a dipper, haven't we, flying upstream? Yeah, yeah, you, you can't walk along this path really without seeing dippers pass. And um, that one looked like it was visiting a nest in one of the overhangs as well, probably with a mouthful of caddis flies and things like that nice. and um, he didn't spend long under this he, was off. he or she is off straight out again back out to get yeah. some more and then you were saying sort of in winter time this winter where there was all the snow it was heavy snow wasn't yeah, there yeah there, there was lots of snow um down here and lots of icicles hanging off these mm. overhangs it was really beautiful and um actually i saw some otter footprints under one of the overhangs as well which is the closest i've come to seeing an otter down here um, so that was really nice because obviously nothing else can get down there and there were these big sort of footprints um, which from a distance look like dog footprints mm. for them with a pair of binoculars um, yeah. so they, they're going up and down this part um, part of the river and obviously these nice um, sort of stratified cliffs mean that there's, there's walkways for them to go along without having to come up out onto the path yeah it was just fantastic I mean you can imagine like there's a lot of beautiful deep pools down there so I suspect you've got sewing trout yeah, you, you get trout here, and um, this year there's a fish pass being installed downstream of the Nature Reserve right. by the Rivers Trust, and so we're hoping that from now on we'll also have Atlantic salmon oh. coming up here, so that's, that'll be one to watch out for in the future. Yes, yes, that would be very nice to see, wouldn't it? I mean, the water falls a bit further upstream, probably a bit too high for them yeah, to navigate, aren't at, they? At the very north of the reserve there's quite quite a bottleneck, and um, I'm not sure they'd get up, up that waterfall, but... We, we should have them spawning on the reserve, which would just be lovely be to fantastic. see. And probably the first time they've been able to for a couple of hundred of, mm. hundreds of years. You know. So yeah. there's a weir downstream, is there? Man made yeah. weir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Let's carry on then. So we've just walked through a bit that, again, has changed quite a lot since the last time I was here last year. And uh, the boardwalk's gone. Yes, that horrible boardwalk mm. which wasn't well suited to the environment because it's just so wet in that mm. particular area. You've got lots of water coming down, um, seeping through the uh, limestone there. And it was just rotting away and people were not walking on it. They were right. walking next to it and then of course you've got that massive drop yeah. down to the not river. So, safe. Um, so yeah, it's gone and my volunteers worked extremely hard because it, it weighed an absolute ton and uh, <laughs> Graham will testify to that but it took a long time yes. to get that out get that out of the position it was in and um, hidden away yeah, yeah so you've turned it into something else now haven't you yes well it, it took us probably four full days of work to move it so just a few metres down the track mm. to a hiding place um, to take it out of the reserve would have taken too long we just it was too much so we turned it into a a uh, amphibian hibernaculum yeah. so uh, we just uh, sort of piled it all up in a sort of damp um, secluded spot and covered it with mud mm-hmm. uh, which took a long time yes yeah. yeah. but it's a good thing to turn it into I mean obviously <coughs> yeah. you will get sort of a variety of amphibians around here won't you I suspect with the nice pools that you get and the, the calmer spots yeah well the, I, I, I yeah, trees. Yeah, I was just going to say that as well, yeah. <laughs> One time we were out checking uh, nest boxes and I was, you know, sort of 10 foot up a tree and there was a toad up there perched on one of the one of the branches. Uh, so, yeah, they're definitely about and yeah. not always just where you expect you, them. Saying, Hello, I'm up <laughs> yeah. a tree. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I didn't mark it in my bird survey, but... No, definitely made it would have been a slightly more unusual thing to mark. We've got yeah. a couple of long... Oh, what are they? Like they're flirting. They're really woven, aren't they? Yeah. They're quite an intricate little. Big, big balls of lichen and spiders' webs. And oh. Yeah, what a lovely thought. Weaving spiders' webs. Mm. 
So that's a nice bit of recycling that's gone on in the reserve. And I can see why they put the boardwalk in, because it, yeah. this was really muddy down there, wasn't it? It, I mean, was, it was really muddy. Um, but I think, yeah, it was, it was muddy because it was so wet there. Mm. So we, we took advantage of some vehicle access which appeared when they were repairing the leaf. Mm. Uh, so for the first time in maybe, well, God knows how many decades, we, a- we actually got heavy machinery onto the reserve to... Dig, dig away loads of the mud that had built up and yeah. to bring a load of lime, limestone scalpings down yeah. and so that's just so much better for that wet environment it's draining nicely into the river now and um, yeah right, not such a quagmire for people yeah. yeah yeah I mean we were just talking about how easy it is to access the reserve and it's not <coughs> a great reserve for somebody in a, say a wheelchair but um, mm. this is a this lovely path along the riverside which is actually pretty good it's not too bad at all is yeah. it I mean, on, on this side of the river, because I guess because of the quarry workings mm. and the tram line, there's a really nice open path. Um, on the other side, it's such a different a environment. Um, yeah. It's sort of narrow and up and down. But then, you know, it's just it's a nice variety. Yeah. Really different feels to the different sides yes. of the valley. Totally different. And unfortunately, we won't be going down that side because I am testing it to its full because I'm on crutches at the moment. So yeah. I won't be walking down that side of the valley, but it's well worth walking down that side of the valley because it's as you say a totally different world again yeah um yeah. and yeah you get a different perspective of the the river walk mm. that we're on really now different habitats as well because mm. i mean on this side you've got all of this lovely open woodland pasture um nice open paths so you, a nice relaxing walk and then on that side it's a bit more adventurous you've got um uh, quite narrow paths lots of ups and downs and mm. walkways and you've got the uh, coppice woodland um and a nice bit of acid grassland which is just opposite now um, so just just completely different habitats yeah. to pass through and a really nice variety. Mm. Which is a bit odd. Though. You don't really expect to find acid grassland on limestone. Oh, limestone. Or... That's a really mm. Im- good point. So, so not, what's not, it doing I'm sure, here? I'm not sure why it's acidic. It's one of the things that's uh, intriguing me yeah. at the moment. I had that theory about the, the trees, so didn't you? Well, yeah, it, it, it was it was um, forested. It was um, Can it had pines on it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And they do, they, they do acidify the soil quite dramatically, don't they? But it should then have be neutralised. Mm, I was going to say, it should have leached out then, shouldn't it? Yeah. Interesting. But there's bilberry there and there's heathers there, yeah, there which so are acid like in. Which suggests they got there somehow from Somewhere. more acid yes. yeah. grassland. Well, just, just up hill um, behind here you've got Kilsarnas Mountain. Mounted and that's all that's all quite acidic, so it's sort of okay. crept down. Yeah. So it might eventually disappear if your theory is correct and it is because of the well, it might just be water water leaching down through it from off the mountain. And, and it's bringing the acidic, bringing the acidic mm. waters down mm. with it. Yeah. There's a dipper down there. Just flying down onto the rock down there. Mm. So we're in kind of more of a, a tranquil area of the reserve, aren't we? Really now it's sort of the river's calmed down again mm. um, and it's very wooded actually isn't it, it's nice although to the right of us it's nice and open but it's a nice sort of woodland of, about us and there's a lot of birds yeah tranquil is definitely the word just mm. so it's such a this nice sort of calm meander in the river here so nice place to come and meditate which is yes. uh, what somebody did spot somebody perched on a rock down here a couple of weeks ago uh, yeah, I can, can see understand why, why totally. yeah. It's a lovely place to be on a day like today when the sun's out and it's warm and calm and and the river isn't spate, spating or yeah, yeah. doing its scary thing and it's all very inviting. Yeah, this spot's great for a swim, I would thought. It's very tempting. Mm. Needs to be a little bit warmer still for me. <laughs> So volunteers are a very important part of what you do here, aren't they? Oh, definitely. I, I couldn't I couldn't do my job without the volunteers. I've got I've got a few regulars. There's maybe five of us go out every Tuesday and Thursday, and then a few extras here and there, mm. depending on people's work patterns and stuff. And yeah, I just couldn't I could not get it done physically. I can't do the work, and also it's it would be pretty lonely as mm. well. Um, 
you know, it's, it's really nice to have a friendly group to, to do tasks That's with. Especially when they bring Welsh cakes. Especially when they bring Welsh cakes, <laughs> yes. Sure. Fortunately, one of my volunteers is one of the, uh, the best Welsh cake cooks in South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly the world. I was going to say, I thought it was a global competition yes, that he'd really. actually went on that. <laughs> So if somebody wanted to volunteer with you then? They, it, it, Tuesdays and Tuesdays. Thursdays, yeah. yeah. We usually go out between about 10 and 2. Right. Um, and we always stop for a cup of tea in the middle of the day and it's it's just a nice friendly, mm. friendly day out. It's, it's a variety of tasks, you know, so sometimes, like during the winter, there's so much tree work to do and there's mm. a lot of tough work to get done. But then tomorrow, when we're out, we'll probably just have a nice walk in the sun, pick, mm. up, pick up bits of rubbish that's here and there, and um, just look... For Keep a lookout for projects that need doing mm. uh, for another day when the weather's not quite so lovely. <laughs> yes. We have an everlasting to-do list. Oh yeah. It keeps getting added to. Yes. Yeah. Never gets shorter. No. <laughs> no. We'll bring the list with us tomorrow. Yeah. See what you can do. No. So that's quite nice. So if anybody wanted to volunteer with you, what would they? How would they go about that? Uh, just give me a call, I suppose, yeah. or, or an email. Yeah, yeah. Or just turn up at ten o'clock in the lay-by on Bainer Road. Okay, yeah. so that's Kevin Coyd. Yeah, it's the road between Kevin Coyd and Trevecan. Yes. Nice. And there's a burger van there. So yes, easy so to spot. Yeah. <laughs> and an emergency lunch if you need it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or a nice cold drink when you get back up. Yes, that's brilliant. Well, good luck. hope some of the other, some of the other people listening to this might come along and volunteer oh, then. I hope so, yeah. yeah. Thank you.